Hey, John here. It's Wednesday, so I'm gonna share some legato practice tips as well as a lick. If you ever worked on a lick that's loopable and then you think you got it, but then as soon as you try to use it in a musical context, it just falls apart. This practice technique is for you. The reason why these licks fall apart isn't because you can't play them already. It's because when you play them and you start them in a different part of the beat, you start them in a different way rhythmically, the accent is going to fall on a different note than the note that you, you're used to hearing when you practice it over and over again. So that's why it sort of falls apart because it's not a technical issue really, it's more of a brain issue. And the brain is connected to your hands, so when the brain gets confused, your hands get confused. So working through with this loop method I'm going to show you will solve that problem. But it's also an awesome method to get some variety in your practice, even though you're working on the same repeating licks, but it won't feel that way. And you will also iron out any type of weaknesses that you have in these repeating licks, which will help your overall technique a lot. And finally, this is not only about legato. I initially found this stuff through alternate picking. But I found that it works equally well with any technique, from hybrid picking to sweep picking, alternate picking, legato. doesn't matter, as long as you can repeat something in a loop, meaning that it's a seamless sequence of notes that you repeat over and over again, you can apply this technique. So, hope you stick around and see you in the lesson. Before we get started, go and sign up for the mixed lesson pack. It's totally free, you get 17 different lessons covering alternate picking, hybrid picking, sweep picking, legato, and a complete solo. All in full Guitar Pro, MIDI, you have PDFs, you have videos and everything. So just click below and sign up for that. If you want tabs for this one, as well as all the previous lessons, you can go to my Teachable site and sign up for the YouTube lessons. Basically it's five bucks a month and you get access to every tab in Guitar Pro format, in PDF, in MIDI and so on, and any type of extra material that you need for lessons will be available there, and you'll also get some bonuses. I'm also posting all tabs on my Patreon, so if you're ready, go there, you can do that, and when you sign up there, you'll also get access to the huge lesson library containing literally hundreds of different lessons. Right, so here's a slow version of that A Lydian lick and we're going to start on the 5th fret of the low E string. So this lick is pretty straightforward, basically based on two positions of the A Lydian 3 note per string scale. So we start here and we go up three strings at a time. So three strings, go back one. After that, move up to the next position, go up the whole scale. And after you get to up to the fifth here, it's gonna go back down again. So On the way back, I only use uh, pull-offs and hammer-ons from nowhere, basically. So I'm not picking anything when it comes to the string changes. On the way up, however, I'm using hybrid picking. You can use only downstrokes, only upstrokes, down, up, up, down, whatever you want, because you have so much time, because we have three, three notes per string. So you have time to do whatever you want. But I prefer to do it using down, M, A, down, M, A, down, M, A, and then I pick the top string. So. All hammers. Or all left hand at least. So again from the beginning. Right, just a quick practice tip here. Whenever I have a long line like this, and when I want to practice the whole thing, 
basically keep it at a low tempo where I don't make any mistakes, but also to sort of relieve the boredom and also get more out of it and make sure to play it in every position of the fretboard. That also gives me some kind of a forward momentum or milestones to look at, because if you only repeat it in the same place over and over again, it's just gonna feel like it takes way longer to get the reps in. But if I can do like, all right, I'm gonna do it twice in each position, I'm gonna get the benefit of visualizing the whole lick in different positions of the scale or the neck. And I also get the benefit of getting the different tensions of the string. So I'm not gonna be stuck at only using it at whatever position I'm practicing it in. So in this case, I will start on F, for example, and go up. Maybe do that twice and then go up to F sharp. G, uh, sorry, G. G sharp. And so on, but obviously not at that tempo. Just do it at a really reasonable tempo where I can have control over everything that I'm doing. Because again, we're trying to teach the body to do what you want it to do and not just, you know, go for broke and hope for the best. Because at a certain tempo, you don't have any control. And basically, that's when sort of your training kicks in. So whatever you've done the most of, that's the most likely thing to come out when you try to play it faster. So the more slow reps you've done, assuming you've done it with you know, a technique or movements very close to what you're going to use at a faster tempo, then that's what's going to come out. So it's very important, in my opinion, to practice things where you actually get the good reps in. Uh, because the part of your brain that takes all these reps in, it's not a very conscious or smart part of your brain. So you need your conscious mind to be sort of the gatekeeper and make sure that you get the good stuff in. So that's basically your job when you're practicing. So keep that in mind, and I think you'll have a lot more success if you have ever had trouble with this stuff. Today's practice tip is looping. And looping is something that I sort of discovered for myself, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people have done it already, so I'm not claiming any copyright to this or anything. I just think it's a really good thing to add to your practice arsenal or practice toolbox. And it's really helped me a lot. Uh, I initially did this a lot with picking, but it works equally well with any type of techniques, sweep picking, hybrid picking, alternate picking, whatever. The basic concept is that whenever you have a loop, you can start on any note in that loop and the loop shouldn't be changed. So for example, if you start here on the fifth fret, and just play one, two, four. So that would be five, six, eight, uh, fretwise, and then back to six. You get four notes in this loop. So you get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Uh, but you can also start on the second note of loop and go two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. You start on the third note of the loop and go three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And finally start on the fourth note of the loop and go four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one. And why you want to work on this is so your brain won't get confused when it hears something different. You, you make the same movements, but you hear a different sound. And I'm gonna explain to you what I mean here. So if I play this, compared to this, compared to this, You probably heard they all sound a bit different. This is because of the spotlight effect that I talked about in the accents video, where whatever note that falls on the beat will get that spotlight effect where it sticks out a bit more, whether you're accented or not. Uh, and why this is so good is that when you do this thing, looping or accents actually, accents is just a way to do, get the same effect when you have longer lines that they're not really loopable. But if you have a perfectly loopable thing, it's better to use this method, I think. 
So basically, whatever note that falls on the beat, you're going to hear it clearer than the other notes. And because of that, it will be easier for you to hear if you're doing something weird. If it's out of time, it's not as clear. If you're using some kind of picking, you get some flams. So it's just easier to, to bring that problem area to your attention. And then you can fix that by slowing it down and then basically rub away all those bad notes uh, in your practice. Because a lot of practice is really about finding what's wrong and then fixing it. And usually fixing it entails slowing the tempo down. Like I said, it works equally, equally well with any type of technique. But since it's a legato video, we're going to go through a short legato routine. So we're just going to use the four different uh, three note per string fingering or three, three finger fingering. So we, we have one, two, three, one, two, four, one, three, four, two, three, four available. And we're going to just play this loop. So first off, we're going to start with one, two, three. And you want to do this with our metronome, obviously. I'm not going to turn one on now, but you want to have a metronome on. And it doesn't really matter if you do 8th notes or 16th notes here. I'm going to treat this as 16th notes. So that's going to be basically 4 notes per beat. And then uh, go through the loops here. The way that I suggested you do this is that you do 3 loops and then you end the 4th beat. So you're going to go like this. 1, 2, 3, 4. Pause. One, two, three, four. Pause. One. Pause. So basically, you get three reps of each loop. So if you didn't follow here, I start on the first note. Second note. Third. Fourth. Now the choice is you can go either to the next string and do the same thing. And then keep going like that. Or you can change to the next subdivision, uh, sorry, the next fingering. Uh, I suggest that you do all six strings or seven or eight strings, depending on how many strings you have. Uh, with the first fingering. So one, two, three, go through all four combinations. Then you repeat that with one, two, four. And then go on like that, one, three, four. And obviously you don't want to do it that fast. Then two, three, four. But you do that on all six strings. And you want to vary where you do this as well uh, each day. So maybe start on the fifth fret the first day, then you go to the 13th fret, maybe the 16th, 9th, whatever. It doesn't really matter. You just want to experience the different tensions of the strings. One thing to look out for here, and I see this in a lot of my private students, when I show them this, they would go like, all right, cool, looping, great. Then they just go like this. If you do one, two, three, they do this first one. Cool, no problem, starting on the second finger, seems very logical. Start on the third finger. And then like, yeah, I'm done now. No, you're not. You start on the second finger again. You're like, what? But I already did that. Yeah, but if you look at it, one, two, three, four, this finger occurs twice in this four note sequence. So the first time it occurs is when you go two, three, four, one, two. And then the second time it occurs is when it's four, one, two, three, four. So keep that in mind so you don't miss a, a variation here because it feels very different to start on the second note and going up to two, three, four, one, then what it feels like when you start on four, one, two, three. And just try it out for yourself. I, I know it's, well, on the face of it might look a bit, you know, 
illogical because it's the same sequence. You're not playing anything different. The same fingers in the same order just happens to start at a different point. But it's the fact that your ear is going to perceive this as a different thing because of the notes, where the notes fall on the strong beat or not. So it can confuse the ear. But if you practice anything that you loop like this, that will really strengthen that technique and it will also really bring out any type of weakness you have in this particular phrase. But I think this is a good one to start with for this concept because it's fairly uh, uncomplicated. This is only four notes to keep track of and it's pretty straightforward. So start here and then whatever looping thing you're, you're working on, whether that is a big sweep arpeggio, some alternate picking thing or whatever, anything that you can loop, just count how many notes you have in the loop and then you know how many variations you have. If you have six notes in the loop, you can start on the first note, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. So it doesn't really matter. So I think the only place where I wouldn't use loops is when uh, it might be a repeating phrase, but it, it has like 24 notes or 32 notes or whatever, because it becomes kind of time consuming if you have to go like, oh shit, I have to do 32 rep, um, different variations here. In that case, I think it's better to break it up in smaller bits. But uh, if you can keep something within, you know, six or eight notes, I think you're good. I think looping is really effective then. So just give it a try. And as always, just leave a comment below if you don't understand what I'm talking about, and I'll try to set you straight. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, again, work through this, give it a few days, if not a week or two, to really get it into your system. And don't just try it out on the legato stuff, try it out on any type of repeating thing. For picking, for example, you can take that classic Paul Gilbert lick and just start on each different note in the, in the shape. And then I think you'll find that this is really helpful for alternate picking, for example. Uh, that's where I initially started to work on this stuff. And it's super helpful there but i also found that it's equally helpful for any type of technique so it's a fairly simple concept but it can feel kind of daunting when you start doing it because you will feel like why is this not working what the hell you know uh, it can be quite confusing but the point isn't to get all the variations up to the same speed it's more about finding uh, the ones that are really bad and making sure that you can get you know each variation up to a decent speed at least even though you might always feel more comfortable with one or two of the variations so again don't go for like oh it has to be even it doesn't have to be even but it's good to find out if there's some variation that you that you have a really hard time with and that's the one you should spend even extra time on because that will improve your overall technique so it's a really good way to find these hidden problems that you might never find if you just sit there and repeat a repeating lick in the same way every time so really take your time with this one it's one of my favorite practice techniques so uh, go ahead just work it out and then I think you'll be really happy that you did. And as always, I would really appreciate it if you could comment below any type of issue you have regarding left hand technique in this one or tapping. Uh, so I know what to make videos on in the future. Because again, I'm doing this because I want to help you guys. So I hope you take advantage of this and actually comment something. So uh, yeah, thanks again and see you in the next one.